Hey everyone, I am Matt with Matsami Games and welcome to our playthrough of Victoria. Um, this is our very, very first video, so hopefully this goes well. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm assuming since you found this video that you're familiar with what Victoria is, but if you're not, basically Paradox Interactive has a series of, I think it's four or so uh, grand strategy games that take you to various points in history. Crusader Kings goes from about, uh, you know, about William the Conqueror to uh, up to the Renaissance. Europa Universalis goes to the Renaissance to the Victorian era. Victoria covers the Victorian era up through about the Great Depression. And then Hearts of Iron covers, um, you know, World War II and the early years of the Cold War. Uh, I'm an enormous fan of, of these games. Now, confession time, I have never, ever played Crusader Kings or Europa Universalis, but... Um, that's not going to stop me from doing a playthrough of Victoria, which is just a really amazing game. So, for my first run through, I'm going to do something easy, which is I'm just going to play as the United States. Uh, let's see, let me alter that. Make that normal. Fog of War on, autosave. Uh, do, 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 do. Once every 10 months or so, that slows the game down a lot. I'm just going to set everything on normal. Um, the USA has an interesting. Uh, strategic situation because they've got you know the, those oceans and whatnot and they're really kind of protected from overseas aggression with the notable exception of Mexico and, and Canada which are minor details but uh, let's get started I'll kind of explain what I'm doing as I go along um, yeah we'll see how this goes okay so turn that down there all right, so let's pause this real quick because I want to do a couple things. All right, first thing first I'm going to do here. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I want to go to this. Okay, what I want is I want to be on the political map mode. Let's zoom out here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is roughly the strategic situation we're dealing with in the United States as of January 1, 1836. Um, you know, we've got most of our population is going to be concentrated here, up and down the East Coast, with little bits of, of you know, people up throughout here. To the south, we have Mexico. Uh, at some point here, we are going to have to fight a war with Mexico for domination of the continent. Um, the catalyst for that war is going to be Texas, this group right here, which at the beginning of the game, Texas has just declared its independence from Mexico and is about to begin the Texas Revolution. Um, Spoiler alert, Texas almost always loses this war. For whatever reason, what I've noticed is that when I play this game, I've, I've never tried it as Texas, but the end result of the Mexican War is usually Texas gets like these two provinces, so they're independent, but they have two divided provinces and they get their butts kicked by the Mexicans. So um, don't expect much out of them. You know, the, 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 the victory in real life was fairly improbable. So... The strategic situation for the U.S. is helped with the fact that we have all of this ocean, all this ocean over here. We're not in a situation like, say, for example, um, Germany or France, where we've got all these different land borders with aggressive powers that are going to go after us. We're, we're pretty safe, with the notable exception up north here of the United Kingdom, which still controls Canada and is the single most powerful nation in the game. Um, a lot of what I do in the early game is going to be spent trying to avoid fighting Canada. Um, I've done it before in previous games, and it's sometimes you can do great things. I had one game where I, I think I conquered like all of this, and so like the USA was just like everything plus British Columbia, but it also can go very very poorly. So we're going to try to avoid that if we can. So that's kind of the the plan right now. Um, the basic strategic plan I have for this game is, number one, we need to get ready to start off with to fight in Mexico. This is going to be a big thing for us. Number two, avoid war with the UK. We need to build up some power and all that good stuff over the course of time. And then once we get to about the 1860s or so, then it's on. Yet it's manifest destiny time and the USA is going to spread democracy all over the world. That is the plan. All right. Uh, if you hear bark in the background, that is my dog. Uh, apologies in advance for that. So, first things first, we're going to start off by raising everybody's taxes. Sorry about that in advance. Um, you want to keep it under the 50% threshold, if you can. All right. Uh, we want education to go up. We want crime funding to go up. We want social spending to go up. Uh, I'm going to drop Navy Maintenance down to start. 
and we'll kind of deal with that as we go along. All right, that's, I guess, good for the moment. Um, let's see now, we need to do research. So, what are my options here? Let's see, military plans, do, 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 do supply consumption. Uh, that triggers that, market structure, tax efficiency, ideological thoughts, medicine. I'm going to start with ideological thought, um, just because, so you see all these different, you know, new inventions that come here. Each of those, I'm pointing at the screen right now, I don't know why, you can't see it. But each of those will do things like uh, give us a 2% gain to our prestige as we go along, and that's going to be hugely important. So it's going to be nice to have that right off the bat to get started. Um, again, if you haven't played Victoria, the important things to look at up here are, this is our manpower, this is our leadership, this is our research points. This is our prestige, this is our money, and this is our diplomacy points. The most important thing up here is prestige. Um, we need to maintain this above zero at all times, no doubt, but else we want to get that number as high as we possibly can in order to win the game. Um, everything else will kind of kind of become clear as we go along. Um, now, on to trading. What do we need here? You need... All right, let's turn these over here so that they're... We're buying them and not selling them. We need ammo. We need glass. I'm actually not sure what factors we have to start the game. I'll tell you, I should go through and figure that out. We need wool. And that's it. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do. All right. So, let's take a look at our armies real quick. We start off the game actually in not terrible shape military-wise. Um, obviously, I'm concerned about the United Kingdom's army. That's like within marching distance of New York, but that's okay. Um, we've got our main army, excuse me, uh, we have Dragoons here, which I'm going to move those to Alexandria and Louisiana. We have the Army of the South, and we have the Army of Observation there, uh, which is kind of monitoring how the Texans do. Again, spoiler alert, they're not going to do very well. Our Navy is actually pretty good size, but if I recall correctly, a lot of it's old. Um, it's kind of, yeah, so... We get some of it, some naval stuff. And then out west we have some colonies. Um, again, if you, I, I'm just gonna explain this real quick for those who haven't played Victoria. Um, states are, so the, each of these little divisions here are provinces and then the, they make up states. States are a thing in Victoria. Um, if you want to claim a colony, what you need to do is you need to claim each of the provinces that are in that state and then you get to claim the state as your own. So this one here, Idaho, unfortunately, we have Boise and Pocatello. The British have Murray up north here. Um, so there you go. We're not going to be able to get that, um, at least until later when there's a deal that's resolved. The immediate ones are going to be Colorado has, the Mexicans have two of the one, and then in Oklahoma, the Texans, for whatever reason, have one of them. So um, claiming those are going to eventually be a priority, but... You know, as with a lot of things, the war is going to sort all that out uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I have a rambunctious dachshund who likes to get into things she shouldn't. So, um, let's get started. Uh, let's see, what did I set the game on speed-wise? We want it to be a little bit faster than that just because there's not going to be a whole lot going on to start the game. Let's get going. Okay. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Okay, so there are two... Or, oh, election Day. Democrats are going to govern the nation. Um, no. I do not want to enter into a defensive alliance with Texas at this time. So there are two wars. At the, game, the start of the game, every single nation on the planet starts off in peacetime with two exceptions that I'm aware of. One is Texas and Mexico are fighting each other. And the other is that Belgium has declared independence from the Netherlands. So they are fighting each other as well. Um, usual result of this one is that Belgium gets their independence. Uh, but I've seen it go the other way, too. Uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we go along. Now, let's keep going. Okay, we are bleeding money. What is the cause of this? <laughs> this is problematic. All right, well, we're bleeding money, so I'm going to drop social spending down. It needs to be at least 12. 12.7 uh, is fine, and I'm going to drop crime fighting down. I just, I, I'm going to want these to get back up again, but the important thing right now is education, um, and then eventually defense spending. Um, I also want to lower these tax rates at some point if I can. 
Um, but the important thing at the moment is to stop the bleeding. And we've done that, okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little boring to watch. Oh, uh, France has declared war on Al Jazeera, which is what? This. Uh, basically, northern Algeria. Uh, what's Algeria today? Okay, next things f next. What I want to do is I want to start going through some of these and splitting up my pops. Um, yeah, let's split that up. The population in this game is they give you what are called pops, which are basically just... Um, I guess units of population is the best way to describe them. They've got 40,000. So what you want to do is when your pop gets above 40,000, you can split it. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I it just it, It's it's going to make it easier to grow new pops in the future. Uh, split you. So I got that. Split you, split you. Okay. So Boston is now full. I'm going to want to expand that, but I'm going to wait a little bit on that one. Um, New York, New York, New York, New York, Watertown. I actually don't know where the hell Watertown is. Where is it? It's, it must be up there. It must be at like the Albany region. Uh, Rochester, split that one. This isn't super exciting, so I'm just going to go through New York and then I'll go back to the other ones later. Don't need to do Binghamton. Do need to do New York City. And actually here, we're going to run into a problem, which is that we're going to run out of space. So right now, in each of these, I can only have five, uh, because that is the size of my, uh, I guess, the size of the region. I need to expand the grain farm here in order to get more pops. Um, I don't really want to spend that money just yet, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. All right, let's keep going. Onward and upward. Actually, hold on one second. Let's save. And... Uh, come on. Here you can kind of see some of the other random games I've played as. Uh, that's Sony USA. Okay, that's going to be our main save file. Don't freeze on me. Okay, there we go. All right, let's keep going now. Let's just uh, keep churning, see what happens. Uh, okay, we've got, we've got a couple factories that are going. We've got one in Pennsylvania. We've got three in New York, all of which are operating. Good, thank you. None there. Virginia has one. Okay, we're going to eventually want to start expanding those. We can hold off on that for now. Maryland, what have you got? Can I split anything here? No. Um, okay, so this is also one factory you're going to see throughout the game here. Decline that. Again, for those who have not played the game, they the game does culture in a way where it says, okay, these provinces have, the pops are going to be of a certain culture. So here's a really good way. You can see kind of the main ones in the United States here because this is Maryland. Yankee is going to be you know, sort of the northern part of the country. Uh, Dixie is going to be sort of the southern part of the country. Both of these are national populations for the U.S., um, Yankee and Dixie. And uh, frankly, the reason they do this is so they can simulate the Civil War. Um, spoiler alert, they don't simulate the Civil War all that well in this game, unfortunately. Um, then you have the issue of the fact that we still have slaves in the U.S. at this time. So you have African minor slaves. Um, there is a way to free them at some point. As a committed uh, person who does not support slavery, I will be freeing them at some point. Um, how we get there is going to take a little while, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, just do North Carolina real quick since I'm here. North Carolina, Charlotte, what do you got? All right. How are we doing? Okay. Um, since we have some more money right now, I'm going to start off by expanding the New York grain farm. The more we can expand these things, the so each province, let me back up here real quick, each province has its own national, not national, provincial resource that it produces. Watertown produces iron. There's a lot of that that it produces on a regular basis. Rochester produces grain. New York City produces grain. Uh, Buffalo produces timber. These are all going to be the resources that we make that come out to the trade screen. We want to expand these as much as we can. Actually, I don't need that. Let me sell it greater than 63. Okay, confirm. And sell and come on, come on. Sell greater than 63. Okay, that's just an arbitrary number. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to be able to sell these on the net, on the open market as much as we can. Um, 
so the more we can produce, the better. And the way we get to more is by expanding our factories and expanding our you know, provinces. So that's how we're going to do it. All right, let's keep churning here. So, oh, they want to do not sign it in the London Treaty, which I think is something that deals with um, Switzerland, maybe? I think, the London Treaty. I don't know. Who are you at war with? Anybody? Is it war? You're at war. Al Jazeera. Prussia at war with anybody? No. Britain. Britain's always at war with someone. Okay, the naval hero thesis versus the superior crew thesis. With the post-Nelsonian ideas developing in our Navy, our military thinkers have divided themselves into two camps, those who favor the naval hero thesis and those who favor the superior crew thesis. We need to choose which we favor. Um, I don't recall what the differences are between these two. I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily go with the naval hero thesis. Um there's a difference. I, 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 honestly, I've always done the Naval Hero Thesis because I read somewhere when I was starting, just starting off playing this game, I read somewhere that that was the one you wanted to go with. I don't know why that is. I need to figure that out. Ah, coffee, I love you. Um, I have never played this game as the UK. At some point, I want to, uh, which I will probably try to do as a playthrough, um, assuming this channel survives more than a couple of episodes. Um, they do a lot of really interesting things here in India. So they kind of, you know, they've got all these different, you know, allied states and whatnot. And there are some over here that are not allied to them. Um, so they kind of launch wars on a regular basis to take them over. Um, these are also going to be interesting spots for us to colonize down the road. Spoiler alert. So let's go back over here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jominian attitude versus Clausewitzian theory. Basically, so what these two are is these are us us figuring out what we want our primary uh, you know, alignment, I guess, to be in both navy and in army. So Jominian attitude versus Clausewitzian theory. With the post-Napoleonic ideas developing in our armies, our military thinkers have divided themselves into two camps: those who favor the theories of Jomini and those who favor the theories of von Clausewitz. We need to choose which we favor. Uh, again, I don't know this difference. Um, I'm more of a fan of Clausewitz than I am of Jomini, so we're going to go Clausewitz. There we go. Clausewitz is much more famous. Jomini was kind of a, a French military thinker for about the same time. Uh, rubber stock lost. We used discard the significant part of our rubber stockpiles has become useless. Uh, that's, that's a bummer. Total bummer. Okay. Our leadership has reached the point now where we're up to 20, which is good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a new leader. Uh, I'm going to put him down in the Army of Observation because we're going to need someone there. New general, and it's going to be Winfield Scott. Yes. Uh, Winfield Scott, Steadfast School of Firepower. Shock minus 2, fire plus 6. Um, and he has an awesome you know, pre-Civil War beard sort of deal here. So anyway, he's in charge down there. All right, we're building up more money now, so that's good. So let me see. Let's do uh, do Pennsylvania. Hello, Philadelphia. You have an iron mine. I'm eventually going to want to expand that. Harrisburg, hello. Split you up. Do, do, do. And finally, Pittsburgh. Yes, I know they pronounce it Pittsburgh, but if they put an H at the end of the name of the city, I'm going to pronounce it the way the Scots do. It's Pittsburgh. Okay, uh, I don't think... Oh, Cincinnati I can split. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's a lot of population in Cincinnati. Ohio, Columbus. Actually, Columbus, I think I can expand. Split, split. Yes, I can expand that. All right. I'm going to want to, actually, because this one's going to be ready to split soon. Okay. Cleveland, Cleveland Rocks. Split that up. And Toledo, home of Corporal Klinger. Let's put that up. Okay. See, so yeah, Ohio is about as far west as we're going to get where it, there's significant population. I think part of Kentucky maybe has significant population. No. Louisville, maybe? Louisville? How is it pronounced? Is it Louisville or Louisville? Or, I'm, I'm from the north. I don't, I don't know these things. Um, I'm from Illinois, which actually does not have much of an way of population right now. Um, I was born in Springfield, which has nobody. Um... Cairo, again, it's not Cairo, it's Cairo, has nobody in there, and Chicago doesn't have many people in there right now either, so this is kind of the dividing line, there's really nobody out west just at this point, but that will change as the game um, moves on. 
All right, let me check our budget now and see how we're doing here. What I want to do is I want to start to hike defense spending. Um, the reason is because we're going to need some more military units. Um, so we need we need our manpower to go up. Um, we need that to get over 10. Um, every time it gets to 10, we can do a new division. Um, what I want, my, my, my overall goal here is we need to start getting ready for war with Mexico. That's going to come at some point, probably in the 1840s. You can do it earlier than that, but... You know, good luck if you try to do it earlier than that. Um, what I really want is I want a couple of... I'm going to want an infantry division out here because I th think... They may actually already have it out there. No, not yet. The Mexicans will usually put an infantry division somewhere around here-ish. So I'm going to want at least one infantry division out here and then a couple of cavalry divisions to try to capture these colonies in some of the you know western provinces just to drive at the war score. But the main fighting is going to be down here. So I'm going to want... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to want, you know, I've got a couple of these armies already who are here. I'm going to want probably five or six more divisions at least of infantry. Um, and then the goal is just going to be to pound our way through. I may also, one thing I've done in the game, which is uh, interesting, is I've done, I kind of replicated what they what happened in real life, which was you had a landing somewhere here in the Gulf of Mexico, then march over to Mexico City. Um, Battle of Chapultepec is somewhere in here, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, so that might be what we do. We'll have, just kind of have to see how that goes and see what we want to do in the long term. But for now, let's keep on keeping on. Okay. How are you doing? You expanding? Okay. So... Here's the other thing we can do with the pops, and one of the reasons why we want to keep growing those is that we can... Okay, here we go. Um, I mean, I'll go back to that thought in a second, but the Naval Hero Thesis, this was grounded in Jominian thought and later had a successor in Mahan. The basic idea was that the superiority of the leader and of the morale of the unit would break the back of the enemy and defeat her. Mahan theory was much more complex and held seeds to modern geopolitical thought refined by Mackinder. That's not how you spell refined, by Mackinder. Um, let's see, MW is a man of war, max morale plus 10, uh, frigate max morale plus 10. Cool. Alright, um, so the thought I was going with here before I got sidetracked. So, we can take each of these pops, uh, go to this one here. Right now these pops are just laborers, and you'll see it also because there's an iron mine here. Um, you also can do farmers, but you can convert them also to these other things. Officers, clergymen, clerks, craftsmen, soldiers, and farmers. We are going to want to start converting our laborers and farmers to clerks and craftsmen, craftsmen, especially clerks. These are going to be extremely valuable for us going forward, um, but it costs a lot. You know, we need 2,400 you know pounds there, and then a lot of resources to do it. So we're just going to want to start building up our resources. Once you make clerks and craftsmen, those go, they don't work in the iron mine anymore, they work in the factories. And we're going to want to expand these, and new ones are going to open, and all that stuff. In my experience, when playing as the USA, you don't necessarily need to expand the factories, because the capitalists open um, new ones much more quickly than that. Um, let's see, New York, what do you got? Let's see. All right, so, so here's, here are the other pops in the region. So you can see right here, here are the capitalists. Um, these are the guys who are going to... I love this picture. It's such a great picture. Um, they're gonna. These are the guys are the ones who are going to open the new factories. And I can't remember what clergymen do. They do something. Um, but then these are the guys I was talking about. Clerks, craftsmen. Uh, those are the those are the going to be the backbone of your modern society, especially clerks. These guys are going to do really, really good things for you. Um, particularly making you a lot of money. All right, let's keep playing. Oh, Clausewitzian theory. Pause. Excellent. Clausewitzian theory. This was a subjectivist view of war in which there were a set rules of the thumb governing warfare. Uh, the important concept was friction, which was simplified. I think that's how you spell simplified either. Everything that could go wrong. The important thing was to break the will of the enemy. Doing that would ensure optimized performance of friendly forces and severely handicap the enemy. Some misguided individuals of this inclination put the battle of destruction as the most important feature. However, while the Clausewitzian theory does not say that it is improper, it does not encourage it either. Breaking the will of the enemy can take many routes, but a good organization and technical modernization is definitely important. That is not how you spell definitely either. All right. Well, whatever. Uh, affects infantry, cavalry, and dragoons, all max orb plus five, and is supply consumption of each plus two, plus six, plus four. Okay. 
this is going to be kind of a boring part because we're really just getting everything organized. But uh, you know, we got to kind of churn through this early bit here to get things going. Um, what I'm doing right now, basically, all of these little maneuver thing, thing, no, no alliance, is just laying the groundwork for the future ability to set up our um, our army in a way that's going to be beneficial. We, we have to have a strong foundation of our nation in order to support the military, um, just as in real life. Shocking, I know. It's a shocking concept. Uh, what are we short on here? Uh, okay, I'm auto-saving. Please don't crash. Thank you. Ammunition. Bye. I also want to... I forgot about this. I want to um, start stockpiling these as they come available. Okay, that may, that may cut into my earnings a little bit here and there. Machine parts are what you use to build your factories. These are, especially in the early game, they are very, very hard to find very very hard to acquire um, my understanding from the way the trading works is that it the computer will automatically create a national market a, a international marketplace you know countries will put in ooh, 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 ooh. Um, let me finish this thought real quick they'll put in you know for what they want and what they don't want and you can automate trade which I may do at some point um, except that the computer tends to make really stupid decisions on what to trade and then basically it'll 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 allocate the buying and selling out according to prestige. So for machine parts, basically, because we're lower in prestige to start, we don't get the same kind of, you know, ability to buy those as it does, say, Great Britain. Um, so the, the British will use those for themselves. Okay, our scientists have developed ideological thoughts. Awesome. Uh, next up, let's see what my options are. Um, Army professionalism. Naval professionalism. Stock exchange, ooh, tax efficiency changed by 3%, crime fighting costs, do, 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 do. associationism, gain 2% more prestige, medicine, no effect. Uh, I'm going to do associationism again, just because I want that 2% bump in prestige going forward. It's really better, if, no, it's better if you take that early on. Um, yeah, let's kind of build that up as you go. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you see this kind of going up and down right now. Does that mean that I'm acquiring? What am I acquiring? Oh, I'm buying ammunition. That's what it is. Okay, that's that's fine. That's what we need that. <clears throat> okay, there. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, so Mexico and Texas have reached a peace treaty. You can see right here what happened. Texas accepted peace with Mexico in the following terms: Lubbock to Mexico, Dallas to Mexico, and Houston to Mexico. Texas is humiliated in the eyes of the world, losing 300 prestige. So Texas' prestige now is minus 399. Um, yeah, we don't want that. Eventually, we're going to annex Texas. Um, they are independent right now. They have these two provinces that are spread out. They are a very sad and very um, demeaned country right now. But honestly, there's just no way in this game for Texas to win this war. Um, I know it's possible, but it's just not very, not very probable is what I'd say. Okay, Russian Purge, Green Bay, go to Green Bay. Oh, 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 there we go, that's what we wanted. All right, we expanded our grain farm in New York. God, this is such an exciting part here. We're expanding our grain farm, wow. But what this does is this lets us split that up and then it lets us split these up. So now we've got, instead of five pops working that grain farm, we've got eight pops working that grain farm, which is gonna expand our production significantly. Actually, you can split again too. What does that get us to, does that get us to nine? Are we at nine there? We are at nine. All right. Okay. Um, because we're building this up, let me see now. Can I split? Yes, I can split you. Okay. I want to expand the iron mine as much as I can. Iron is such a valuable resource early on. Or it really, really is. Uh, Harrisburg, not yet. Pittsburgh, not yet. Pittsburgh, not yet. Uh, how about you, Boston? How are you doing? Yep, you need to be expanded. Okay. Boston's getting expanded next. And I don't think I looked at Connecticut. Connecticut, yeah, you can split off quite a bit. Yeah, you're almost full, wow. I don't know why it did that, where it's like just a gigantic pop and then a small pop. That doesn't make any sense to me, but yeah, hey, whatever. Uh, Providence, Maine. So people who know me, I, Easton, I believe, belongs to Maine eventually. I think we get it as part of a treaty down the road, if I remember correctly. Assuming we don't go to war with Britain, which is possible. Let's try to avoid that if we can. 
Okay, how are we doing budget-wise? Oh, jeez. Oh, we just, I think we just bought... I think we just bought a uh, machine part. Did we buy machine parts? No, what was that? It's so weird. Oh, all right. New Military Academy founded. The quantity... Excuse me. The quality and quantity of a nation's military officers depends on its ability to educate them. From time to time, prudent men will recognize this fact and establish a new military academy. Support the idea... Leadership plus 10, minus 1,000, or prestige. Oh, I think we're going to support that idea. We're going to go into debt very briefly to resolve that. Okay, so now we've got, we've got debt. We've got an outstanding loan. Ooh, I forgot to jack up the tariffs. Okay, we'll do that. Um, tariffs are taxes on trade, basically. You don't really want to do it, but it is a nice source of income early on. So we're going to do that, and then we'll slowly work that down. So now we've got our budgets better. Um... But we've got 400 pounds in loans. I'm going to want to repay those because right now we're paying interest. It's not a huge problem, but you don't want your debt to accumulate because down the road, you can declare bankruptcy. And that is very, very, very bad. You don't want that. All right, folks, I'm going to call that a part here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this boring first episode of Victoria. Don't worry. It's going to get a lot better as we go through. Um, if you liked it, uh, drop me a like. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you for the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.